好，大家好。那我们下一场主题是介绍这个 Zeno。那这个讲者是右元，那他来介绍就是这个呃 Zeno 的这个 protocol。那我们掌声欢迎他。Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Yu Yuan Yuan, and in Chinese, Yuan Yu Yuan. I know. Okay. So uh, today's talk will be be met in English, but uh, feel free to ask me uh any questions in Chinese. Okay. And uh, I'm currently working in Zscale uh tech companies as a software engineers. Uh, Zscale is a tech companies uh born in May 2022. Uh, our mission is to bring uh, unconstrained freedom to communicate, compute, and store the data in any place, at any scales, uh, efficiently and securely. Okay. So today I'm great to uh, have a talk to share our open source project, uh, wh whose name is Zeno. Uh, it unifies uh, data in motion, data at rest, and computations from uh, embedded uh, microcontrollers up to data centers. And it provides a location transparency API for high performance pub sub uh, message uh, models and distributed queries across heterogeneous uh, networking systems. And it also facilitates uh, geo-distributed storage. And we emphasize uh, integration with third-party technology in a plug and play fashion. Yep. OK. So first of all, uh, Zeno is uh, built on top of blazing faced Rust and writing Rust for security, safety, and performance. So Rust is very good for uh, stress safety, uh, memory safety, and also very performance. And we also provide uh, some API bindings for common use programming languages like C, C++, Python, and JavaScript. And recently, we are working on the binding for Java and Kotlin, yep. So if you have any similar experience, uh, we can have a, <laughs> a quick chat, okay. And uh, we also uh, suppose the network te technologies from uh, transport layer down to data link layer. So currently, uh, we suppose uh, TCP IP, UDP IP, and for security, TLS and Quick, and also for uh, low power conductors like uh, serial Bluetooth and Rora, for example. And we also suppose a uh, shared memory IPC. So uh, using our protocol is very uh, uh, efficient. Okay. And uh, we have a very elegant design on our header. So it can down to a minimal five bytes uh, overhead in our protocol. So it can be deployed on some uh, embedded systems and low uh, power systems and constraint networks. Yep. Okay. And Zeno is very extensible. You can easily uh, to bridge our protocol to your existing frameworks, like some useful databases, like uh, InfraxDB, RackDB, and Amazon S3 service. And furthermore, you can bridge some existing pub sub message models like MQTT, DDS, and a uh, bridge to your web development. Like users can directly use RESTful API to communicate with Zeno protocols. Just use a uh, curl, uh, pause, or get command. Yeah, it's very uh, easy to use. And Zeno, we provide a Mistra C implementation for the Zeno protocols targeting uh, extremely uh, uh, embedded uh, targets. Uh, Mistra C is, is a software development uh, guidelines for uh, embedded uh, devices aims at uh, reliability, safety, and security. So that's why uh, Zeno can, de can be deployed on some critical systems like autonomous driving, robotics in uh, manufacturing, factory, uh, in manufacturing industry. Okay, we have several uh, applications in real case, even with Rust. Yeah. Okay, and we uh, we also working on uh, no STD uh, features for Rust. So yeah, so you can also use our protocols on some uh, 
uh, constrained uh, architectures. Okay, so let's take a, a look at uh, some uh, examples. Pops up. So, okay, actually I need to use the mouse because uh, <laughs> screen casting is, is here. Okay, so the users uh, just need to declare a, a subscriber with a configure uh, sessions and run it in a loop. Then you can listen on some uh, specific key expression. And for the pub uh, publisher main site, uh, you need to declare a uh, standard sessions and put the values on that desired uh, key expression. That's all. It's very quite easy for use. But uh, with this kind of a scenario, uh, we can let the Xeno to uh, figure out which uh, routing path to send and which endpoint to send with a uh, pub sub uh, message model. Okay. So uh, for someone who is not familiar with uh, pub sub message model, uh, let's make a quick recap. First of all, uh, MQTT was popularized as a protocol for IoT. And it's very useful because uh, users only uh, or developers only need to specify which topic is interested in uh, to send or receive, like the temperature in this room or uh, some battery values on the IoT device. Yeah, it's very useful, but uh, there are some limitations on the architectures it supports. Uh, it only supports client and broker architectures, and it requires TCP IP, so it makes it uh, inconvenient for constraint networks, okay. And the choice of topic names has uh, impact on the bandwidth and it supports push mode only, yeah. On the other side, uh, we have another uh, famous one, Apache Kafka, which is very powerful, especially for data streaming service. But uh, it's designed for centralized uh, architecture. So it requires a very powerful several servers from uh, Kafka clusters. and those brokers will handle the push messages comes from producers and handle the requests from the poor message uh, uh the, the poor message requests from the consumers okay but it only supports poor mode from the other side uh uh comparing to the previous uh centralized architectures we have another solution which is fully distributed uh dds uh data distribution service is fully uh, data uh, decentralized, but uh, it's hard to run and has tons of uh, uh, configuration configuration to set. And it also required a, a powerful networks like a wire network with low message loads. So it's hard to deploy DDS on a wireless networks. Furthermore, it's hard to scale over internet. Okay. And it, also supports uh, it, it also sp supports a push mode only so in that scale uh, we begin thinking about uh, can we have another solutions which preserve the uh, conveniences comes from uh, pop such message models or even more and have uh, and, and let it very friendly to use and very uh, performance be performant yeah so here is a comparison between Xeno versus uh, DDS, MQTT, and Kafka, which is made by uh, National Taiwan University. Yeah, and uh, the results said uh, Xeno can deliver uh, at most 3.3 uh, times higher to the DDS in throughput value, and 23 times uh, higher than Kafka, and 35 times higher than the MQTT. And furthermore, uh, Xeno is has very low latencies, down to 10 microseconds. Uh, these these tests are uh, made in a 100 gigabit Ethernet network. Okay, so for real use case, uh, Xeno is very good for uh, IoTs and for critical systems like autonomous driving. Yeah. Okay. What's the problem? Okay. We have some technical issues here. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, uh, 
talk about the uh, Zeno's abstractions. Uh, we have some normal uh, pub sub uh, service. Like uh, I'm a publisher, I pop some message to you. And furthermore, we have pool mode. Uh, it's very practical because for some devices has its dedicated duty cycles. Uh, it will wake up and send some uh, poor, poor based uh, subscri subscriber messages to the to its ne uh, its network. And if the uh, if its neighborhood have some data matching these key expressions, uh, it will respond it to it. It's not uh, definitely to the 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 source at the very far end at the the publishers. You can just directly read the cache at its near uh, near neighborhood. If there have some uh, data matching this key expression, and the notion of the key expression is slightly different from the topic used in the MQTT and Kafka. So, as you may notice, uh, we have a star or double stars in the topics. It's just like a regular expression. Users can directly specify the rules in the key expression to uh, query some topics have uh, maybe inside the desired time interval or uh, have some computation like the value greater or lower than some bounds, your desired bound. Okay, you can make some query by the key expression. It's uh, uh, advanced uh, regular expressions on the topic. So that's why we call it key expression. Okay. And for the lower part, uh, is <laughs> is some uh, queryable. Okay, so we we have another notion named queryable. Queryable is some service that you can make some query to it, and it can do some computations and replace uh, the data to you. It's very useful in some practical applications, like for example, in autonomous driving. Uh, I'm a vehicle. I have some AI models, but after processing some uh, data, I need to uh, talk to some servers to let him to uh, print some navigations, like uh, uh, let the fleet to go, go go to which direction. Okay, so I need to carry my data and send to a server, and let the query ball do the computation by some AI model, for example, and then return the results from it back to to me. So uh, we we call this action a query ball. Okay. And uh, they don't suppose uh, any topologies like peer-to-peer, -peer, which is not supported by uh, Kafka and the MQTT, but we support it in a fully connected one click or partially connected mesh. When it runs in partially connected, we will run the link state uh, routing algorithms on it to let uh, Zeno build it the routing automatically. Users don't worry about it. And it can uh, it, it also support some uh, classical scenarios like a broker or routed, which is just like the broker in uh, MQTT. Yeah, and uh, if we have two routers or uh, some peers, uh, we can let the Zeno messages cross the firewall or cross the nodes uh, behind the NAT, which is very convenient. You don't need a proxy or some jump server. Zeno router uh, do it for you, okay. Yep, and finally you can uh, extend the whole uh, applications into a clustering systems, which is very efficient because, uh, for example, two robots inside uh, one factory, they may be connected under the same local networks. Why do we need to uh, send the data to a cloud service and send back to another one, which is just inside? The same network. Why not we can just directly send a uh, peer to peer directly? But how can we achieve it? We, we, we can let the Zeno to figure it out. Okay. Users just need to specify a key expression. Okay, so it's very powerful. Yep. Okay. So finally, uh, as an open source project, I need to answer uh, questions that if those protocols are free open source, how can we make it profitable? <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at a uh, commercial uh, program we are currently working on, uh, data platform. Uh, take a closer look at a practical scenario, let autonomous driving. So considering uh, we have, considering uh, we have some vehicles forming a fleet 
fleet fleet two cons uh comprise of uh f five cars and the fleet one consists of uh three cars okay and those cars running on the on the street connecting to some maybe a uh, 5G cellular network and so they uh, they can do some vehicle to vehicle uh messages uh, exchange and those cars may connect it to some uh, public service, cloud service like Azure or uh, AWS or your private cloud. Okay, so as a commercial product, we, we can provide some uh, monitoring tool, visualizing tool, and beta management tool to let the user to uh, develop their uh, application. Like, for example, if I want to monitor all the positions of all the cars for all the fleet, okay? We can declare a subscriber here with a key expression, fleet star car star position, okay? And then all the data uh, on the publishers on each vehicles will send the data to these subscribers through maybe a public, public uh, cloud service or a 5G network. Okay, or some edge service, some roadside units, yeah. So it's a, a heterogeneous network, and it can go, uh, it can determine a, a shortest path to send uh, the data efficiently. Okay, and we also support uh, the query. So this is the queryable. If we uh, if I want to uh, query some uh, data informations, uh, it can be distributed to each cars. Okay, so for example, we have se several uh, custom database on each vehicles, and I made a get uh, query on all the cars on the fleet one. Okay, here's is the fleet one. Okay, and uh, th this uh, query uh, will be sent to each uh, database on each uh, vehicle because we have uh, the data storage declare uh, this kind of key expression, fleet one, car one, and star star, listening on each vehicle. So that once a query uh, request sent to it, uh, it will reply properly, okay. And also uh, we, we can uh, do some uh, applications like query to a cache server or a private cloud a uh, private data storage on a cloud, okay, which uh, we, we can uh, request the data security, yeah. Okay, so the next example is uh, we can make some computations on each vehicle, which is very useful on autonomous driving because when the cars forming a fleet, they want to uh, drive uh, smoothly to to let the the, the fleet uh uh in uh to let the the fleet uh passing the the cross uh, the intersections quickly, okay, then uh they they need to make sure the navigation is consistent, so uh as a vehicle one uh I can uh add some uh, navigations from the uh, uh roadside unit or some uh 5G MECs there is some model running on that servers, and I let the server do some computation according to my uh, local data and send back to me so that I can have a consistent behavior to uh, the other pass, uh, partners inside the same fleet. Okay, so that is another uh, scenario of uh, computations. And also, uh, one another class can also make the query to the private clouds and do some computation and get back the results. Okay. So in the conclusions, uh, we provide uh, promising uh, products uh, built on Rust that uh, even uh, it is open source and uh, we, we, we can have uh, products to help some industrial pr problem like uh, autonomous driving or robotics uh, in, in industry or furthermore in AIoT. Yeah. And Zeno is uh, an incubating project under the Eclipse Foundations. The protocol is free and always will be. So you can also leverage the Zeno powers in your projects. Yeah. 
And all the details can be checked on our GitHub projects. So uh, if you have any feature requests and issues reports, uh, we, we are really appreciative. Yeah. Okay, so finally, uh, so if you are interested in some technical reports or some uh, numerical results, we have a detailed uh, blog on our website, zeno.io. And you can also check uh, Zeno's GitHub uh, at this link. And if you want to ask any question directly, you can join our Discord servers. Usually, we will ask your questions or your application or <laughs> your request in one to two work days. Yeah, we can code uh, for you. For you, yeah. Okay, and don't forget we have uh, YouTube channels. Uh, if you want to uh, learn some hands-on or workshop or demos, yeah, you you can uh, click our YouTube channel. And take a look. Okay, so thank you. That's all from my side. Yeah. So <laughs> I know uh, you are some Rust touches, <laughs> uh, which is interesting in Rust. For so for this track, uh, I don't have enough time for talking about some Rust details about our projects. But if you are interested in some Rust materials, uh, you can check out our uh, blog. Here, blog. Okay. So for example, uh, have you ever think about? Uh, we have several Rust runtime, right? Tokyo, SNSTD, Small, blah blah blah. Which one is? Um, uh, the most appropriate for the real world applications like IoT, like robots, like uh, uh, self driving cars. We make some uh, surveys on it. So uh, here we make uh, performance evaluations on Rust asynchronous frameworks. And uh, in the conclusions, uh, uh, so uh, first of all, we do two tests. One is a ping pong test to test the latencies, and to and test another one is a super test. How many messages uh, it can send? Okay, and as a result, uh, uh, we found that uh, a sync entity is uh, better than Tokyo, which may be different from your comments. But if you have any uh, different ideas, uh, please let me know. Okay, yeah. And all the uh, comparison uh, script, those programs and uh, testing scripts are open source. So you can reproduce it by yourself. Okay. And here is the performance comparisons between the Xeno and other protocols. We also have uh, some details discussions on it, and all the programs are open source. Okay. Yeah. So. Do you have any questions about <laughs> our work goals? Please. Uh, sorry. I was going to say there's a comparison with MQTT yep. as a protocol, but there's no comparison with MQP. Uh, yes, RabbitMQ and similar implementation. Uh, not yet, but I think. Uh, MQP, uh, so Jerry maybe <laughs> he, he have some comments on it because uh, he's uh, he utilized MQP in his uh, uh, projects. Okay, so I don't think MQP will be better than Zeno because uh, Zeno uh, has a very elegant, uh, a lightweighted headers. Uh, oh, sorry, overhead on its protocol. It's basically be, uh, very close to native TCP. Yeah, or UDP. Uh, depends on which which protocol you choose. Yeah, and MQP in requires a broker, right, and a message queues. So it's, it is uh, centralized, which may not be appropriate for s uh, some protocol uh, problem.
Yes. So I don't know if you mentioned, so is there any persistency as part of a synopsis? So if you want to have persistent topics, is that something you have to worry about? Okay, so I forgot to uh, uh, elaborate the query ball. So if you combine a query ball with a subscriber, then it can form into a database. A database is uh, just a listener to listen some new data coming to it, and you can let the query ball bind to some database like uh, InfluxDB or Amazon S3, yeah? And since it's query ball, so it, it can uh, receive some query and response to it. So those data will be stored inside it and can be uh, distributed in a, a, a how would say, the persistent uh, clusters to, l to avoid the data disappear. Okay. Yeah, we also support it. Yeah. Okay. So we still have several minutes. Or do you want to <laughs> want me to discuss some uh, pain point while we developing Xeno protocol in Rust? <laughs> First of all, the compiling speed is very slow. <laughs> And since we are very critical on the performance, so uh, instead of the default release mode, uh, release profile, cargo dash dash uh, release, uh, we will increase the linking time optimization level to the optimist one. And usually compiling the, uh, the Xenon protocol itself on my laptop, it takes, it, it takes me five minutes yeah, <laughs> to, to just test some modifications. Yeah, and also uh, Rust has uh, it doesn't have a stable API. So, but we came our we we came uh, we have a plugin play uh, service for third party engine. Okay, and so we deploy some library in a shared library manner. But sometimes when a uh, Rust uh, change its tool chains, the, the shared library need to change accordingly. But uh, we, we didn't aware of it. So sometimes uh, users will complain to the bug that uh, why your library is not compatible with the current protocol. <laughs> sometimes it came from Rust. Okay. And furthermore, we use a workspace to manage it our for, for the workspace management okay and uh, sometimes cargo have some bugs uh, we all uh, fail our CI test so we need to <laughs> uh, debug it to to check uh, whether this bug is came from our site or from the cargo or the raw sites yeah <laughs> okay yep so that's all from my side Please. I'm curious about how if I, uh, how would you integrate the my existing framework with Linode? Suppose that my existing framework will be based on you know MQTT or some other protocols, you know. So what's the best way so to make up the product? <laughs> okay. So, so for example, uh, I have already have a service uh, implemented in MQTT. Which is very common in uh, provide by the Amazon service, right? But uh, our Xeno provide a Xeno plugin MQTT. Xeno plugin, uh, so sorry, Xeno bridge to MQTT. When it receives a MQTT message, uh, it will uh, uh, unwrap it and to uh, uh, copy the, the header to Xeno one. Okay, so. Uh, it can be e uh, very efficient if you uh, properly addressing the header to change the header to our uh, Xeno protocol and then set up, uh, pre preserve the data payload to uh, send out to the Xeno. Okay, so let's uh, how we can uh, passing some different protocols uh, data to Xeno network. Like DDS, uh, we will uh, unwrap the d uh, headers on it and then preserve the payloads and uh, make a new package to send it out. And sometimes uh, we, we can make some uh, improvement like uh, leverage some uh, zero copied uh, mechanisms to make it uh, faster and 
with a minimal overhead. Okay. So uh, basically, we didn't uh, reject to use other third-party protocols. We, we just uh, adjust the headers and add our, uh, uh, to change the header to our language. So that uh, it can be uh, unread back to the MQTT and uh, can leverage the power of Xeno uh, network. Yeah. Uh, I heard a lot of time you say that the header you're yeah. talking, and I was wondering wh that the when you compare to MQTT is a layer seven protocol, and the Xeno, I wa was wondering the header wh which layer OSI layer you're talking about is it layer seven or layer three, layer four? Uh, yeah. Okay. So <coughs> for the MQTT, uh. Uh, for example, it depends on TCP IP, okay? So we will adjust the, the headers based on the, uh, the network, sorry, the transport layer, transportation layer, okay? And for, for the integration with the serial or the Bluetooth, uh, you will down to the data link layer, yeah. So it depends on the applications, yeah. And our protocol's header is aimed at uh, providing the automatic routing uh, computations like the shortest path and uh, handling for the, the key expression. Some some topic based uh, public uh, pops up uh, message model. Yeah. Okay. 好,